Hello and welcome everybody. We are in our fourth year. Four years and I'm still looking for poker chips. Genuinely, I'm always interested in poker chips. So today we're looking at the Lucid Diamond and its ugly stepsister, Ravenor. Not to be confused with Ravenor Classic. <laughs> Little teaser for future reviews. So these are not stepsisters. These are twin sisters. And we need to discuss these. PokerChipForum.com. I have an account on here. If you have any questions about Lucid Diamond or Ravenor tournament poker chips, please visit me on PokerChipForum.com and leave a message. So Ravenor, Lucid Diamond. There are some differences. You can see as these progress, the center area changes color, whereas Ravenor just sticks with the white raven there. And the mold. There are different molds. Molding hard plastic, that's pretty modern in 1937 two cards what game have plays two cards hmm, i wonder and a diamond yes a girl's best friend whatever happened to that saying i don't know just i think i'm revealing my age when i say stuff like that ravenor loose diamond very similar all right these are ceramic material they are made out of a ceramic which is just a really hard plastic some people call it a composite but th if you think of it as a hard plastic you're set all right hard plastic very durable and all this the color and this center portion here is all printed onto the chip this is not a label and this is not a an inlay so this doesn't come off, it's actually printed. They actually use a dye sublimation process, if you want to know. But it's dyed, printed, onto the chip. And ceramics have, in my experience, proved to be pretty durable. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. With a ceramic, you're going to get dimples. Can you see these little circles right here? Like they were injection molded, kind of like something that you would find on a parch tree. There you go. Uh, you can feel those a little bit on the edge, but it's really difficult to detect. Oh man, but they sure... For me, ceramics always have shuffled very easily for me, like butter. Like, you, like butter, like a hot knife through butter. So overall, materials are exactly what you'd expect with a ceramic. Obviously, the molding changes the texture a little bit. And that leads us to quality control. And the first thing I like to do whenever I get a stack of chips is I like to see how flat they are. So I just make a little stack like this. And this is just for visualization. I'm not <laughs> going to pull out tons of instruments and give you a number here. But when you squeeze the edges like this, if it rocks back and forth a lot, it's probably not very flat. Whereas, you know, these are pretty flat. So here are some dice chips. This is a pretty small stack here. But when I rock these back and forth, can you see some little gaps there? Like between like your twin sister your stepsister's teeth, right? Look at, look at the not flat. Oh dear. Okay, so like ceramics, like all the ceramics I've played with, these are very flat from factory. Have they haven't warped at all during shipping? So, and I live in Georgia, so it gets pretty warm down here. So from that aspect, pretty nice. Now let's look at the printing. There's no there are no edge spots, so nothing you can really go wrong there. However, looking at some of these. Some of these do not have a centered, what I'm going to call printing here in the middle. So the centered printing is a little bit off. Here's one right here. And it, to me, really bothers me because they have this mold where they have this hard edge around the center printed area. If you're going to set an expectation that something's going to be centered, like, I don't know, molding a channel around the center, maybe you should center it or you've just set yourself up for failure when you haven't centered your center printing right there. Come on. Anyway, that's something I've noticed. However, I would like to point out that all ceramics have difficulty centering their printing, but most chips, like let's look at these crown laurels, for example, create a design where they can mask the centering issues. They don't set themselves up for failure. Sorry, I totally bumped the tripod. And I think these, to me, make me more happy because you don't notice that they're not centered because of the design. And once we move past that, we're talking about the design of the chip. And the design, there isn't really much to say. Obviously, you get some color progressions with the Lucid Diamond, which I enjoy. And the Ravenor, you get some really consistent center printing there. Now, 
what do I feel about that? I wasn't really sure how I felt about that. It wasn't really polarizing for me. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I love it or I hate it. It was just kind of like, I don't know. And then I played with this with some family, just these, these little stacks playing some heads up with some friends and family, thinking of a five-year-old boy running around this house. And they were fine. And then you introduce some other designs, particularly some Ascona. And I was like, wow, these are really busy chips. I'm like, what's wrong with these chips? And for a couple of minutes, it really like caught me off guard. And the other little set that I pulled out when we were playing with family was the Nevada Jack. And again, when I pulled these out, I was like, whoa, these are, what's wrong with these? You get used to the simple elegance. It's almost, if it weren't for the Raven and the Diamond, it's almost like Bauhaus, right? Like less is more kind of idea, which is very modern in the 19, for the late 40s, you know, very modern ideas. Uh, it's funny when you talk about modern art and you're talking about art that's like 80 years old. I love, I love art history. So uh, for me, the design isn't, doesn't necessarily speak to me, but they're poker chips. And I think that's important to remember when you're looking at this. And speaking of that, I should actually have talked about this during my segment about quality control. Let's do the industry standard put some chips in a tray and spin them around. That's the official terminology. That's the nomenclature we use. So spinning these around, do you see any inconsistencies with color? Hmm. Does it look like it's deliberate? Like with, remember I talked about Nevada Jack. When we spin these around, do you see some marbling here? See that marbling looks intentional. That's intentional marbling. And yet here you have a very splotchy pattern here. It's like they were too mean to make it marbled. Or maybe just looking at, looking at, it might just be poor quality. Maybe not, maybe poor is the wrong term, just not of the highest quality. It's just not consistent. I'm just looking through this and it's just like, there's like dark and light, but it's not so bad you're gonna confuse it with a one. It's like, oh, there's a little light splotch there. Is that a one or a five? Clearly there's enough red there. You're not gonna get lost. So that's kind of a, for me, that was an interesting, an interesting um, thing about this. Very flat chips, very happy with the flatness though. So design, very elegant. However, you know, there are kind of some shortcomings with these. See, I wonder, no wonder these all get mixed up, Raven or Lucid Diamond. Uh, overall value, now remember, this is, <laughs> these are, you know how like sometimes you like see things on eBay and you're like, it's too good to be true. Look, I'm getting this wonderful thing for a wonderful price. And you look at shipping and it's like 60 bucks. And you're like, the item I'm buying is like $5. They're just trying to gouge you, right? With these, I wouldn't say they're trying to gouge you. It's definitely part of the pricing model, the business model that Sunfly is using to move these chips. So you see these and you're like, hey, these are a pretty good deal. And then you look at shipping and you're like, Ugh, it's the same cost as a lot of the other premium ceramic chips on the market. So do I feel like it's gouging? No, because after shipping, if you buy, you know, quantities of hundreds of them, then you're getting a reasonable price per chip. It's not, if, if they were like $4 a chip, and of this quality, I would have some concerns. But and that's one of my other concerns is you're getting a tournament chip. And one of the things that one of the things that I look for in a tournament chip is you want to buy thousands of these sometimes because it's a tournament set. And so are these priced for that? Not really. Not for a lot of people. I would still for me, I would still look for a cheaper option. If you're buying, if you're paying for a premium ceramic. Maybe you're looking for some more design rather than the simplicity. Maybe, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. For me, it seems like these should be sold at a discount because they are just blank tournament chips. It looks like these were made to a budget and yet they're charging premium ceramic prices for it. So moving on from the price, uh, let's talk about some competitive options. And that gets kind of tricky because when you're looking for a tournament set, you can sometimes find things let me roll some options out here like i know on poker chip forum one of our sponsors paid sponsor by the way i paid for these chips myself 
yes, I paid the, the shipping costs for these. So I got these and some other ones that I wanted to play with and, you know, see if I like them or not. So occasionally you find some awesome, like look at this poker chip forum tournament set right here with the new GPI chips. I love these. Oh my goodness. These are so much fun. If you could find a set of these, definitely go with something like these. Uh, might be a little bit more expensive than <laughs> some ceramics, but within that same area, right? So why why would you give up some higher quality or like the Elite series I've shown and our pen and the review is pending? You could use those chips instead of these. So if you're looking for some premium tournament chips, we have some great options. I feel personally, in my opinion. So for me, the premium market, I would go for something more premium. And for the discount market, there are some other options, even in the ceramic world of like crown laurels, like something that I showed you earlier. There are no denominations on this. It works great. Some things I don't like for like Nevada Jack, I don't like for tournaments because the dollar sign, a little busy for me. Same with the Tiki Kings, great character, fun, cartoony. However, for a tournament, maybe I would look for something more simple. Oh, and there's another, another here, let me dig these out. There's another option that you would, you could use for premium tournaments. Look at this. Atlantic Club. Oh my goodness. Left-handed shuffle. Oh my goodness. Lovely. Talk about some premium hot stamp tournament chips. To me, that's what I think of when I think of a premium turn. Yes. Yes, please. Thank you. Classic poker chips. All right. Links in the description below for some of the competitive options. Uh, let me know what you think of competitive options. There's plenty of them out there, even in the ceramic world. Uh, let us know in the comments. What are your favorite tournament chips? For me, I, I get these. They're elegant, they're nice. They have a mold, which, you know, I can understand they may command kind of a premium. It makes sense. The market for this set of chips, though, is a kind of a small market. You'd have to prefer ceramics to, say, modern. Ooh, look, there's my John Hobby business card. To more of a modern GPI chip. And you would want something very simple and elegant. There you go kind of in my opinion kind of a small kind of a small market however it is there for us i'm excited to see what everybody thinks about these i'm going to do a quick sound test just for kicks and giggles i like to, <laughs> I, I think i do this sometimes more for me than maybe for my audience which might not be the best youtube model but something i enjoy doing so let's roll in some casino chips some blue chip casino chips some china clay chips what about some classic poker chips maybe we should do the tournament set and let's see we have modern gpi what are we missing some metal slug chips what do i have kicking around here dice chips should we just do some good old classic dice chips all right let's rock on so which one am i testing here this is the oh, let me move this down here okay contender number one on American poker chip ninjas. We have Ravenor Tournament versus Horseshoe Cleveland Obsolete Real Casino Chips made by GPI. Followed by the very inexpensive dice chips. Clink, 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 clink. Atlantic Club. Nevada Jack Skulls. Ceramic versus ceramic. Huh. I wonder if it's the uh, different color that makes the sound difference. Ooh, modern GPI. Some group by Poker Chip Forum tournaments chips here. If you got some of these, by the way, you are lucky. These are awesome. If I had some disposable income that weren't tied up in investments, I totally would have bought millions of those. Blue Chip Company, Obsolete, Garden City. Look at this, missing an inlay. That's an interesting chip right there. But we're not looking for interesting. We're looking for a tournament set with the name Lucid Diamond or Ravenor. Let me know what you think. Visit me on PokerChipForum.com. You should be a member of PokerChipForum.com. Great information, great people, great community, fun community. Talk about awesome, awesome things like, is a hot dog a sandwich? Come on, 
where else are you going to find that kind of kind of community? And I have an Amazon shop. Every penny helps. So go down into the description, look for my Amazon shop, look for links to Apollo on the Sunfly distributor where you can order some of these as well as my Instagram and Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. My name is John Hobby.